let's see. Okay, we'll just leave us on the screen. That's what we're seeing right now, right? You're not, are you seeing any documents or anything? Yes. Okay, all yeah. right, thank you, Christy. All right, so how are you doing, right, Laura? Take care. Thank you. Hi. How are you doing? Good, how about yourself? School going on in your house right now? Yes, yeah, today is a remote day. So uh -huh. yeah, they have to log in four times to do attendance, get their assignment, and then they're off and running. Wow. So, so smooth so far on the remote. So far. I'd say they definitely get more done Monday, Tuesday in school. Wednesday is a full remote, like they have their schedule. Today, I, I, I don't, I haven't really checked in on what they're doing for assignments. I know my daughter's really busy. My son seems to have a lot of free time, but I'm just not sure what he's doing and what he's not yeah. doing. Yeah. I gotta check in later, but yeah, I mean, it's going well. They're getting used to it. So yeah, good. That's yeah. good. That's great. I'd be curious to see how this all plays out, you know, for different families, different kids, you know, oh, absolutely different for everybody, which is the challenging part, I think. Um, okay, so we have an agenda that has a starting with a timeline. And I put that I put that on because I just wanted us to be sure that this we've looked at this closely and we can live by this because it's our time toward in that May June. Yep. Piece, the crunches, especially, I just want to make sure that we have um, got the timing right. Okay, do you happen to have the timeline there or do you, should I be opening it? So I'm just trying to see. Oh, to in, the, in the. Um, I have so, it. Oh, I have it on page 13. I have it open right here. Is it say, like, will this be a one year or two year cycle evaluation? Is no, that what? No, oh. hang on for a second. Um, in the. If you go into oh, the- I see it right here. 2021, you, September 2020. Okay, that's where it was. I missed this folder. I have to go I, looking for things. I'm still not used to Google Docs. Yeah. So I was trying to find this today. And okay, yeah. this is really helpful. So you're in the superintendent evaluation ad hoc committee folder? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, yes. So it's 2021. It's the timeline that went before the school committee in the last meeting. Okay. All right, so we're, let's just literally walk through this so that we know yeah, what's that would be helpful. Okay. okay, so September, we um, this is what we're doing right now as number one, organizes for success, and that refers to this section of the evaluation guidance document that um, pulled a bunch of questions and things you should think about at the front of the process from the MASC and uh, DESE guidance. Um, so we'll do that. That's coming up in the agenda. And from that process, we should be forming some recommendations that will go to the back to the school committee uh, for discussion and a vote. And that's represented number one under October. Mm -hmm. School committee discusses and votes on recommendations based on step one, September. Okay. I see that. Yep. Okay. Uh, number two, September. Uh, we revisit the summative feedback um, to inform annual goal setting. So the point there is that this is a continuous improvement cycle. So when you're setting new goals, you should be looking back at what happened at the end of last year and, um, you know, what needs to be followed up on or deepened or, you know, improved based on the feedback you got at the, in June. Jeff should be saying then, okay, what should we be working on now? Right. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, trusting that he's in the middle of that process. He's thought about his goals as he represented in the September meeting, but he's coming back in October with uh, formally stated goals for the committee to discuss. So I, I have some more info, uh, thoughts about that, but I put them at the end of the agenda. Okay. Number three, superintendent solicits feedback on those draft goals, which he did in September, his first thoughts. And then um, normally superintendent submits goals to school committee, but we've pushed that into October, which is fine. So October number two, um, part of this process is to review the district improvement plan because the goals are supposed to advance district improvement. Mm -hmm. um, so we should be in touch with the district improvement plan. And for people who, um, I bet you probably a lot of the committee couldn't even say what's in the district improvement plan right now because yeah. so much has gone on since its first 
was first presented. And uh, I wrote to, to Jim and Jeff to ask, I believe that Jeff is preparing to talk about the district improvement plan at this next meeting. Um, because, you know, we're into year th three of the plan, I think, and and with the pandemic, it seems like this is a time for mid-course corrections or uh, clarification on where we're headed, given where we are. So um, that district improvement plan should be back on the table and it should be part of our thinking as we think about the superintendent's annual goals. So, uh, I, so I've written to Jim and Jeff to, what's that? that? The website? Would that be on the website where I would find that? Um, the, well, it's in, I put it, uh, in our, it must be in here. Yeah. In our folder for today. Um, hang on for a minute. I've got to get my note, my folder open. Hang on. In the September 24th meeting folder. For our, our which, committee. Today. Which I just discovered. Yeah. 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 Well, there was nothing in it till this morning. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, I feel better. Oh, good. <laughs> so if you open the school committee and superintendent responsibilities document. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Yep. There we go. Okay. So what I put in there was I just cut and pasted some uh, pieces from the superintendent evaluation guidance document yeah. that pertain to the goal setting process. So tool A is school committee responsibilities. And in particular, relevant to the goal setting process um, is number uh, four, mm -hmm. ensure that the goals and actions detailed in the superintendent's annual plan are challenging, measurable, and focus on high priority needs of the district students. And that would be as articulated in the district improvement plan. Okay. So that's that's what we are going to be doing in October. Okay. And then tool B is the superintendent's responsibilities. And what pertains to the goal setting process here is number three and four. Um, prepare for the goal setting. So superintendent should be preparing for goal setting um, and plan development with the school committee by doing steps A through F. Mm -hmm and then meeting with the school committee to discuss uh, the professional practice and student learning goals that he's proposing and collaborate with the school committee to identify district improvement goals. So I, I don't think the school committee is fully aware that they are to, should be involved in thinking about the district improvement goals. I think they, you know, just rely on Jeff to bring those goals forward. And I don't think that they know that the goals are jointly formed um, around district improvement goals. Um, so I think we need to just reorient people to that notion. Uh, right. uh, Cause I think it's been a tip, typically a little more passive, mm -hmm. um, the school committees, position on goal setting they sort of it, you, you feel like you're intruding when somebody brings up their goals it's like well they're your goals so they should be meaningful to you which is true but they also the district improvement goals are supposed to be um, really advancing district improvement as it's represented in the our district improvement plan that makes sense and sometimes the school committee has areas that they want the school the superintendent to work in or they feel are a high priority that maybe the superintendent has not identified in their draft goals. So this school committee has a, a role there and a, a voice in forming those district goals. Um, and then, so if you keep going down, um, I pulled out details from step two of the continuous improvement cycle, which is analysis, goal setting, and plan development. And um, this again, sort of just, puts back some of the details of this part of the process. Um, oh, that's really it's, helpful. It's at this time, it's also valuable for the school committee or designated subcommittee and superintendent to discuss 
what are reasonable expectations for the superintendent at this point in time, considering the district's needs and trajectory? And that, that really pertains to this mid part of the district improvement plan and this COVID period, um, as well as the superintendent's professional needs and interests. How should student achievement be tied to the work of the superintendent? What will effectively, which it traditionally we have not really tied student achievement to the superintendent's oh. work. So that's a question. Right. What will effective leadership look like in practice given these goals and standards? What are the committees and superintendents expectations for the superintendent's impact on the district and on students learning based on these goals? So we should be keeping in mind what's the impact on the district improvement and on students learning. Um, will proficient performance ever depend on factors beyond the control of the superintendent? So we have to be careful about that kind of thing right. and uh, keep an eye on that. Are there any standards or indicators that will be weighted more heavily? That's an option if the school committee says, well, I, I really think this goal is a priority. You could actually weight that goal uh, more heavily in the final evaluation, but you have to decide that in the beginning of the evaluation. From whom should the committee seek appropriately any additional input? So is there any other uh, feedback that you want to have folded into the evaluation process? Um, so then if you scroll down further, um, I'm going to insert the superintendent's job description because I, f I feel like... Um, oh yeah, I pulled that up. That was very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it occurred to me that there, it's, yeah. if, unless you're in education, you may not actually know the full width of uh, breadth of the superintendent's job. And um, I was reminded of that when I read an evaluation, not this past year, uh, or was it this past year? I can't remember once. Anyway, the um, one of the school committee members had said that the superintendent had gone above and beyond his, his, um, his job by uh, attending all these evening meetings that he has to attend. And I remember reading that thinking, well, that's part of his job. Right. <laughs> it's actually not above and beyond. That's actually part of his job. Um, and it's, and I thought, well, you know, it's possible for somebody not in education, not to know that and not to know a bunch of other things that are part of the superintendent's job. So it's hard to tell if he's going above and beyond his job description if you don't know what the job description is. So I thought, well, we should put that out and let people see that. So I wrote to Christy and asked for a job description, a recent job description, which she sent to me. So I'm gonna link that in here. So just, just a little aside, I was on the superintendent search committee and that's ah. when my kids were over at BES. So Ace, who I adore, was like afterwards, he's like, so, so what'd you think of the whole experience? And I said, did you learn anything? I said, yes, I don't ever want to be a superintendent. Basically, <laughs> how much of your life are you willing to give to the town? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a lot of work. And, 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 and they are really long hours. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of evening meetings and, you know, yeah. you're answering uh, to and participating with um, a broad range of stakeholders. Um, I agree. Support people. So yeah, it's a it's a really interesting job. It's a you know like a CEO kind of job. Absolutely. Um, and people may not actually know what's just basically expected of that role. So I thought, well, let's let's share that job description that may be informative to some folks. And then um, the district improvement plan. And there's the link to it in case you're looking. For I appreciate it. that. That's extremely helpful. So I thought maybe this document with the link of the superintendent's job description, um, we should put in the October school committee shared drive yep. as sort of a kind of foundation information uh, to inform the goal setting process. Yeah, I like that. Okay, good. Um, okay, so the DIP is there and um, I did write and ask just to confirm that Jeff is going to be talking about the DIP on in October. So I'm waiting to hear back, but I think he's planning on discussing some portions of that plan. All right. So I think part of our, um, we should have um, some comments at this next meeting that help to 
highlight some of these key points in those documents I just went through. Mm -hmm. um, and that would be something that you might like to think about, whether you'd like to frame those comments. Um, but um, I'm happy to do it with you or to do it instead of you. It doesn't matter to me. I'm, I feel familiar with it, but it may help you to become even more familiar with it if you go through that stuff and sort of try to articulate, okay, folks, you know, as we, at, before we get started with looking at Jeff's goals, here are some key things to remember about our role in the work. That's great. Um, and, you know, here are some documents we shared with you, and this is why. Um, and so it made me think about, like, what, why are the superintendent's goals important? And I think that's sort of important for us to lay out for people, because I think a lot of people commonly, if they, if they set goals in their own jobs, it's often compliance oriented, or it's, um, it's something you just have to do, but it's not very, it's not treated as very important. Right. <laughs> In this case, it's, I, I would argue that it, it's very important because it frames, um, we have an, uh, a sort of a obligation and an opportunity to um, make sure uh, that the superintendent is really advancing district improvement. The goals are the most tangible a form of accountability we have for that mm -hmm. um, because it's one of our significant roles to evaluate the superintendent. Yeah. So we want to make sure that those goals are aligned with the district improvement plan um, and are advancing priorities in that plan. A plan covers a lot of ground, so we want to make sure that the annual goals are really tackling the priorities there. And this is one of the key tools we have for looking at district improvement. The, um, the other thing is that in Berlin, Boylston, um, the superintendent's goals are tied to compensation. Uh, in his contract, it says if he has a summative, final summative evaluation of proficient, he gets this kind of an increase. And if he's, if he's uh, rated exemplary, he gets this kind of an increase or needs improvement, this kind of an increase. So um, it's tied directly to the budget and to how much we pay our superintendent. So that adds a lot of weight and a lot of districts, they don't do that, uh, but here we do. So that adds another set of uh, factors for us. Um, Yeah, and it's really our opportunity to maintain focus on what's most important. So if we look at the superintendent's goals and we say, well, these all sound good, the district, you know, the personal, uh, what are the uh, professional practice goal and the student learning goal are gonna come from Jeff largely. The district improvement plan, the district improvement goals are really our opportunity to make sure that uh, those are centered on what's most important for district improvement. And that's going to be informed by what the superintendent talks about with the right. district improvement plan. The other piece is the student learning goal. Um, well, all of the goals need to be um, written as SMART goals. And you'll see also in the folder, there, there's a document about SMART goals. So maybe we should open that for a second. Yeah. That's a great idea. That would be the other piece that I would want to upload to the October meeting. So this again comes from the guidance, our evaluation guidance document. And it spells out SMART, um, which people have seen a lot but may need to revisit. And perhaps more importantly, uh, there is an Appendix D from the DESI, I think it's from the DESI uh, evaluation materials that are some sample district and superintendent SMART goals. And you'll see three sections. There's a district improvement goal, uh, some examples of district improvement goals, student learning goals, and professional practice goals. And um, it's important to take 
a, a look at these, I think, to understand what SMART goals look like in action and, and what appropriate goals look like. So if you look at the student learning goal, for example, they target very um, measurable and um, student learning outcomes. The achievement gap, college readiness, student growth on the MCAS. Um, and we typically have not had student learning goals that look like this. I, I think it's important for us to to make sure we have good, well-focused uh, student learning goals, as well as the other goals. And you'll see they have all the characteristics, I believe, of SMART goals. So I think it's important maybe to draw attention to a couple of these as examples mm -hmm. of what goals should look like uh, or, or um, what the elements of the SMART goals are that we should be watching for. Um, and and for for us to ask questions if we feel like a goal is, is that we're looking at a draft goal is not we don't understand how that's measurable or what the outcome or the impact of that goal is going to be that we should be this is our time to ask about those things um, it I think this other piece about the goals that makes it important is that in order for the evaluation process to be successful in June mm -hmm. has to be set up well in October, right. September, October. If we have goals that are not SMART goals, they're not clearly measurable, or we as a committee don't clearly understand what they mean or what we're going after or by when, by whom, um, then we can't measure it in May. I mean, right. we can form a judgment about it in May. We'll be all over the map. We'll have all different kinds of understandings about, oh, I thought that meant this. Mm -hmm. And somebody else saying, oh, well, I meant this. Or the superintendent himself saying, well, I, what I really meant was this. So we need to set up the process to be very clear and measurable and timely, all that um, now. Mm -hmm so that we can have a smooth process through to the end and people forget that they kind of um you know move through the goal process more loosely now and they get more serious when june comes right. yeah <laughs> really june should be relatively easy this should be actually where the hard work goes on about making sure we have the right goals that are really gonna move the, the district and that we can see measurably how the district is going to move, what the impact is going to be. So there should be some real um, questions, and questions at this point in the process. Mm -hmm. that, does that make sense to you? That does make a lot of sense, yeah. It's something that I think we continue to work on um, to have people really talk about these things because I think number one they they may feel like well I'm, I'm not an educator so I really don't know I defer to Jeff right uh, right I mean that's a natural feeling if you're not in education um, so we have to understand what a smart goal looks like and we should be looking for those qualities all of us should be able to do that Absolutely. Uh, and we should be able to understand how these SMART goals relate to the district improvement plan as Jeff has just described it. Um, and as we can see in the document, we are responsible for understanding that plan. So if we don't understand something, we need to ask questions and build our understanding and not be afraid to sort of Put out there that we don't understand that we don't understand something um, uh, so we have to set the culture for that too so so my question for you is if we put these documents in the smart goal document and the first document that we looked at um, would you like to talk about sort of set the frame on why this goals process is important what we need to pay attention to as school committee members um, before um, Jeff gets into the goals? 
Yes. So what I would like to do, uh, focus on, um, is I would be comfortable doing that. What I, what would be really helpful is if I could kind of pull that together, get an outline. And then if I could go over it with you so that you, you can sure. coach me and say, you know what, you missed this or that's not, the no. right. you know, just yeah. because I feel like, I feel like I, this is really, all of this is really helpful, but I want to make sure that I put our best foot forward and that I'm not confusing them. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. You, you, I mean, that's a good, good idea. Um, and it helps to say, okay, you know, if I were only going to say like three key things to focus on, mm -hmm. what would they be? Exactly. Okay. Um, that's good. That might be a way to think about it. I'm not sure I could say it in three, three bullets, but it would be an interesting thing to try to get across. Um, and, um, and then where in that do you reference the documents as being helpful yeah. people? That would be the other piece, I think. But I do think people need to think about why these goals are important because I think we tend to, I mean, from a, from a school committee perspective, like I think people tend not to think about the goals as being our part of our work. Mm -hmm. They think of them as Jeff's only. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and that our work comes at the end, but I, um, you know, that that's not actually accurate. And so I think we need to try to articulate, and that's why the school committee roles and the superintendent's roles are part of the documentation here. Um, people need to think about what is our role at this point in the evaluation cycle. Uh oh, I can probably going to hear my cat. Can you, my cat is making, can you hear that? That's okay. My dog was just sneezing a few minutes ago, so you're in good company. <laughs> I, don't know if I told you this before, but this cat, the male cat, if he wants attention, he goes up to my closet and he jumps up on the shelf and he grabs a mouthful of the wooliest socks he can find <laughs> and he carries them downstairs with them in his mouth. And he makes these weird meows all the way down because his mouth is full. <laughs> is, he an, is he an inside cat? Is he what? An inside cat? Yeah, he's an inside cat. I think it's his version of hunting. Yeah, because I was going to say, we always had inside cats when I was growing up, and they have the best personalities because yeah. you know, they don't just come in to eat and leave. They, they actually... Yeah, right, right. They interact with you. Yeah, yeah exactly. want my attention. So he comes in and he drops the socks, and then <laughs> looks at me like... Look yeah. what I brought you. <laughs> really, really weird meow while his mouth is full of socks. So I love that it's wool, so it's really hunting. You know, He's going after the yeah. sheep. Yeah, that's right, really. All right. Okay, well, that'd be great. And um, let me know when you want to just run that by me or if you want to send me. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to work on this um, today and tomorrow because while it's fresh in my mind is really the best time. Um, so I'd like to, you know, hopefully run it by you soon because I feel like the more distance I get, the foggier it gets. And yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm with you. It's yeah. really fresh, yeah. Um, just so you know, I'm headed to Maine uh, this afternoon. I can, oh, I can get on a, well, not really because my father's in the hospital, but. Oh no, he's, is he, is he no. okay? No, he's not doing well. Oh. Um, but um, if you, if we set up a time and you want to do another Zoom call and just um, to rehearse, that'd be fine. That'd be great. Yeah. My guess is that um, afternoons mm -hmm. or evenings would probably be better for me. That'd be fine. Whatever, honestly, whatever works for you. Yeah. Okay. I'll be up there through the uh, weekend. So. Okay. And that's funny because I'm headed up to, we haven't been up to Maine in a while and we're leaving tomorrow. And um, now we're allowed to go. Did you see? Yeah. Oh, she, she's okay with it. No, no. I mean, um, Mainer, Mainers will allow Massachusetts people in without a COVID test and all that stuff now. Oh, so that, that's what I meant because I know even though they're, we're, we're, our state's okay with us going there and coming back. I know the governor was for whatever yeah. reason. And we have such low rates right now. I was I was no. getting upset with her. I'm like, come on. Yeah. So that's why we have event. Yeah. So now it just came out yesterday, I think, that we're allowed to go up there and don't oh, have good. to present any of the little COVID tests or quarantine for 14 days or anything like that. That's so good that's to know because we've been just staying at our house and if we yeah. if we get food, it's touchless delivery. So that way we just don't leave. And yeah. then, you know. Now so. you're allowed to be out in public. Look at that. <laughs> right. All right. So now the, um, 
the second part of the agenda was to talk about uh, oh, the feedback, our, our reflections on the report writing process last time. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually going to, let's merge that into the next part because it actually, when we go through the uh, organizing for success part of the evaluation guidance document, that's yeah. actually in there. So we're going to end up talking about it anyway. So let's just go ahead and go right ahead to uh, pages, whatever it is, in the, um, is it 16? Uh, let's see. I have page, is it action number five? Yeah, part five. So page 12, and then the timeline's on page 13. But that's yeah, hang on. Let me, let me pull it up here. Um, one second. Um, I have to say, just just this meeting alone is making me feel better about, as a member, doing the evaluation at the end of the year because having come in in the middle and not really knowing, yeah, right. that I was aware that there were goals, which is something that it's great that Angela and I are working on the new committee members because depending on what time of year they come in, the things they might need to know. But I felt yeah. like that's what I did. I was like, all of a sudden, I'm looking at his goals. I'm looking at what we're supposed to do, and it was it was a task. Um, yeah, so it is a lot. That you're, you know, kind of filling your head and getting prepared for that final, I think is really going to be helpful for a lot of people because I think others felt the same way. Um, well, that would be good uh, if that was the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with you. It's really hard to um, come into the middle of it because there are so many things you're, you're trying to understand at one time, not to mention all the COVID stuff. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, and I feel like now looking back at my assessment, I might have done it differently because I have a better understanding of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the COVID part really <laughs> was a oh, wrench in the works. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when I said 16, that's not right. So it's in the, in, I'm now in my evaluation notebook. Yeah. I was on page 12 for action number five, it's organized for success at the start. Okay. Thank you. Is that where? Yep. This notebook is so helpful. I can't, it was like my Bible when I was trying to do everything. It was just good. That's great. Yeah, yeah. It's really. I, not only was the information helpful, the fact that you went through and highlighted and then wrote things. Yeah. I mean, that, that part alone was worth every single minute of oh, effort. Yeah. And I I'm really so glad to hear that. That's great. It's hard because the evaluation process itself, you know, it's a year long process essentially. And there's a lot to digest just in this. So absolutely. That was helpful. Okay. So the top of 13 is where the questions sort of start. Yeah. The first one was timeline, um, which we just went through. Mm -hmm. So um, I think everything is clear there. This is a one year cycle. Jeff is in his third year as a superintendent. So we wouldn't do a two year cycle. Um, something we might consider next year, but mm -hmm. it's not really necessary in my view, because even if you're doing a two-year cycle, the department still recommends that you have annual goals. So it doesn't really, I guess it, it means that you don't write up the evaluation for two years. So maybe he would be interested in that. I don't know. We'll have to see next year. It's yeah. not relevant this year. Um, I just want to draw attention again to this. At a minimum, there need to be three public meetings each year dealing okay. with evaluation. That's the second check mark under time, timeline. Yeah. And um, the first is to establish goals and focus indicators. So when, when they say it needs to be a public meeting, the intent there, as I understand it, is to have open discussion and for the committees to thinking about something to be transparent to the public. So that means there should be discussion here. There should be you know, opportunity to talk through things, ask questions, et cetera. And that shouldn't all be done sort of behind doors and one-to-one -one conversations with Jeff. It should be open so the public understands how these goals are formed um, and then how they're evaluated. So the first meeting is to set goals. The second is um, sort of the mid-year progress. Mm -hmm. And the third is the final assessment those have to be public meetings. Okay. okay, so there's nothing to really decide there. 
Uh, number of goals and focus indicators. Um, Jeff and Jim already had some preliminary discussion to limit goals to three this year. Um, guidance last year said four, uh, a professional practice goal, a student learning goal, and two to four district improvement goals. Um, but, you know, we're limiting our school committee um, goals and limiting the superintendent to three goals this year is probably fine. Um, so I think, you know, the school committee can question that. They can say, I think there should be a fourth one on this, for example. Um, that's up for grabs because it's, it is, uh, this is a school committee vote. It, it's not something that's determined by Jim as chair, right. but um, the school committee needs to approve that. Okay. But so far, uh, Jeff, will, I believe Jeff is presenting three goals. Um, I don't think there's anything in this goal section that we need to attend to. Um, is there anything there that jumps out at you as something we should discuss or think about? Um, I think the main thing is that Jeff needs to present these fully formed with, you know, benchmarks, outcome, measurement, and focal indicators. I mean, if he doesn't, then we send them back to fill in those things. Right. Um, but... I'll give him a heads up that we're looking for all of that in these goals. Yeah, that would be helpful. Okay, forms. Uh, how will the superintendent report their self-assessment proposed goals, mid-cycle goal progress, end of cycle goal progress? I think that's, I think we've kind of established how that, that's done orally and in writing. Uh, we've done that fine. But the, um, the main thing that I would like to raise here for me, um, when I looked back at the superintendent, the report, okay, hang on for a second. I'm, this is where I might share my screen. Let me see if I can just find it. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to share my screen for a sec. See if you actually see what I want you to see. Do you see superintendent's performance goals? I do. Okay. So what's interesting, this is the form that was basically uh, used from the state. Mm -hmm. And what was interesting about this form is if you look down at the standards, mm -hmm. You rate each of the standards and there's a place for comments for, right. e for instructional leadership. And then you rate management and operations, mm -hmm. uh, the, the focal indicators and overall, and then comments, right? After each right. one, it, it looks like that. The focal yeah. indicators, overall and comments. But the revisions of the superintendent's evaluation that occurred recently were aimed at orienting the evaluation process more toward the superintendent's goals. Okay. And it's interesting on this form that there's no place for comments on the goals. Yeah. I thought that was weird, right? Like, so we would want to, I, when I looked at, when we were compiling results, I felt like, well, I'd like to know why people, you know, what's their thinking about why they voted why they uh, rated uh, any of these goals at the way they did. And right. there's, there's right. no, you know, there are a couple of places we can, we can adapt this form. So, you know, we can add a comment section either underneath the goals, one comment section, or we can add comment sections under each goal and ask people to talk about the evidence supporting their rating for each goal. Mm -hmm. My main concern, I, I, I feel pretty strongly that there should be comments here, um, but my main concern is how much time the evaluation takes. Um, and I'm wondering if 
putting comments after each goal would feel too weighty to people. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I think it would be, I think it would be informative for Jeff and I think it would be, um, would raise the accountability for us when we're making a rating to say why um, with evidence like we do below. I'm just worried about whether that's just too much time. I see what you're saying. And if you put in one, one comment box, will people become more generic in their feedback? Because now they're talking about all of them. I see what you're saying, right? Because there's more than one. Yeah. In this case, there will be three this year. Well, I was just going to say, where we're, where we're doing three, this might be the year to try it. Um, only to because after each one. Yeah, or, well, or all or, three. I'm, I don't, I'm not sure about that, but at least a comment, if, if it was a regular comment box or if there was a comment for each one, um, this might be the year to try it just because there's three versus four. So it's, you know, right, right. More manageable. Yes, exactly. More manageable. So I mean, do you think there would be one for each of them or because I'm not sure like for me, I'm not sure how I would have rated engagement. I'm not sure how I would have necessarily known some of this. I, I wasn't, I didn't necessarily know, you know what I mean? So I went on the basis of the other pieces. The other goals or the other standards below? So like for student learning, um, there's, you know, one, which is engagement, um, observation and feedback, staff continuous learning. And I believe, like I remember being stuck on engagement and not being sure exactly how I would rate that. Um, well, so, so here's the thing with the goals. So these focal indicators are here because they tie to specific um, descriptors right. in the standards down below. So this, um, we look at instructional leadership 1B, student engagement. That means that his, his student learning goal, being mentored, using the uh, research for better teaching model. Uh, oh, right, okay. That, that description there was his, his goal and it's reflective of engagement and the observation and feedback and staff continuous learning in instructional leadership standard one, which is down here. Yeah. Now, there, you might feel like, well, I don't know exactly how to rate this broad area here when I look at these descriptions. You're supposed to, you're supposed to be thinking, well, the way I know this best is through his first goal, which targeted the, the, which fell in these areas. But when you're up here and you're rating just the goal, you're only looking really at, at this part. At that description, okay. Did he yeah. do this? Yeah. That makes uh, sense. And, you know, how would you rate his work on that goal? Did he, did he meet, did he make significant progress? Did he meet that goal? Did he exceed that goal? Um, and so if you put a comment box under this, you'd be asking people to say, well, based on what are you giving that rating? Like what right. somebody might say, well, you know, he, he detailed, uh, whatever four, four, at least four times that he met with the principals on this, uh, topic. Uh, he wasn't able to do the research for better teaching uh, model because of the pandemic, but he right. continued meeting with his principals on blah, blah, blah. Uh, he, uh, based on the evidence presented, he, he seems to have met this goal. So actually, Susan, I'm feeling even more with, with, with your explanation of that, I'm feeling even more so like we should put a comment box there because that one is, seems so much more easier to comment on than versus the other ones where you're going back, checking specifics. I mean, this and is all tangible. right here. Yeah, um, right. I think so. These are the most yeah. tangible. Cause these yes, are I agree. So I don't think adding them adds a lot of extra work to it because I feel like we we already know that information and to comment on it almost helps you to get it in your head is it did not meet was there some progress like i feel like the, the exercise of of commenting helps you just to, to arrive at the correct um, okay uh, yeah okay all right so then what we would do at this next meeting is propose adding okay. adding um let's gonna make a note here comment boxes after each of the three goals
I mean, is, do you feel like that's that would be helpful? Well, I, I think so. Um, it's hard. It depends on the nature of the goal, probably in some cases. Um, if the goal is, I mean, the comments don't have to be long either. Um, that's what I was thinking. I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, unless you think really it's just a yes or no answer. Did he do this? Did he do this? Did he do this? But then, yeah. there's yeah. Dark cropping. Dark cropping. Um, but then again, for the exceeded, that's huh? he was outside eating grass today, and there's huh? some stuck in his throat. He's like this big too. He's like the size of a cat. Um, but if he exceeded it, that would be the place where you would explain it. And if you feel like there was only some progress, that's right. where I guess you would explain right. that too. So, right. Yeah. yeah. And so in that way, it might be helpful for Jeff. I think uh, I agree. Know, there, there are two reasons to do this. One is to give Jeff more information. Mm -hmm. and the other is to help us think through our ratings. Yes. Justify them and make sure that we, you know, have evidence to back up what we're saying. Um, so mm -hmm. it helps both sides. Um, yeah, I think this would be the year to try it out. Um, and if the committee feels, I mean, we can put it out to the committee, we can say, yeah. or we can have one comment box underneath. Uh, we're recommending comments under each goal because there are only three goals this year and um, to avoid the comments becoming more generic in a one comment box. Mm -hmm. We're talking about all three goals at once. So we can explain that. I don't know. I guess I'd tend to say let's just recommend a comment box under each of three goals. I think, I think that's a good, yeah. See, see if people accept yeah. that. Um, that's the only thing I would change on this form. I think otherwise the form was, it felt clear to me, but, I, you know, did it feel clear to you? I No, I agree. Um, and especially when that piece tied into the notebook, because when I first looked at it, I was like, oh boy, this is a yeah. lot. Like, I don't yeah. know, like, it's, it's very um, intimidating, but then when yeah. you go in here and you, the pieces all tie together, it makes it so much more cohesive. Good, good. Okay, all right, so we'll recommend that, that change in the, in the evaluation form. Um, so this is a, maybe a question for you and Angela when you're working on new member in, induction support. Yeah. How will the committee ensure that all members understand the full evaluation process and the requirements of each section of the summative rating form? So those of us who've done it uh, are okay, but you know, if we have some changes here mm -hmm. in the committee structure, there could right. well, either we can have a committee workshop mm -hmm. in the spring before this process really kicks into gear, or uh it could be part of the induction process that that um you know we as a sub evaluation subcommittee you know meet with people individually to talk through everything in the notebook mm -hmm. at the form and everything um and and, and the, that decision may depend on how many people are new on the committee right that's a good point um so but i think it could be either handled by saying, let's have a workshop if there is a, a significant number of people uh, or through your induction work with Angela. I mean, you can specify how will that happen? Right. How will you make sure everybody understands the evaluation process? Does that, does that feel like something that, that will follow yep. your mom? Yep. Um, That's helpful too. So I'm just going to make a note, induction with new members, either workshop in spring or in sort of one-to-one -one induction process, something like that. Yes, I agree, workshop, yeah. As, as defined by Lori and Angela. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I think the rest of this was all we're in good form with. Do you see anything else about the forms? Um, 
that needs attention? So we need to, when we make, market, that's good. When I, so one of the ta next steps is to, that we'll be doing between now and December, mm -hmm. we'll be updating this notebook whenever there's like, you like printing, taking out the old timeline, putting in the new timeline, for example, taking out the old summative evaluation that has last year's superintendent's goals in it and putting in a new one that has this year's superintendent's goals. And so there's some updating that needs to happen. Yep. So we have to make sure, uh, I'm just writing while I'm talking, when updating um, the guidance that we also um, print out, yeah, two to three new binders. Because oh, yes new people well i guess the old person could pass their binder to the new person this is true maybe, maybe yeah. that's what we should be doing actually yeah now, let's do, that. do you do you know if that third person has decided whether or not they're going to you know i haven't heard I, I wrote to jim and i said i know that i saw a listing in berlin recently of um committee openings in the town mm -hmm. the whole committee wasn't on it well, so I, so I felt like, okay, so who's going to talk to the town administrator and the select board and make sure they know that they're there. We, we will have openings. So, um, uh, I'm, I, and I don't actually know when, even when officially they're leaving, anybody is leaving. So I feel like we need clarity on that. Yeah. That, especially, especially for the subcommittees, just because it helps us with planning. It helps us with preparing. Absolutely. Um, not only for our own subcommittees, but for any work we might have to take on. Um, I yeah. feel when you're mentally prepared, you can handle things a lot better. Yeah, you can. So. Uh, <laughs> when you're dealing with something like induction. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you could ask the same question, you okay, know, know. Who, yep. do we know officially when, you know, who's leaving and yep. when, uh, when their last meeting will be. And what we don't know is if new people are appointed, when we will find anyone to fill those seats. Right. Last time we waited some months before, before you came along or. Yeah, well, and it's it, ironically, or not, or interestingly, I guess I should say, I was asked, Lori reached out to me, and what happened was I had, in the fall last year, I had a series of three very close relatives pass away, boom, 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 and I was a caretaker, especially for the last one, I was ready to commit in November, and then I became a caretaker for my aunt, and that carried me through the end of December, and then after that, I just kind of fell into a why <laughs> yeah, um, yeah yeah so when i finally came back around when i finally came up for air is when when i moved forward but i was going to reach out to a few people like i know um uh, i know a few people that that i think would be really great people that i know um i know are very respected in the community um they're sharp they're um motivated they're focused and i know that some uh, i know i can think of one person who has a really good relationship with jeff very respectful back and forth but but um, I, I think he appreciates the way that she operates. She'd yeah. be in a wonderful ad. So I want to reach out to a few people. Yeah, and I think that's our job right now is to just yeah. put the feels up. But we don't have official word as to- Right, so it's hard to, yeah. You're right, that's a good point, Susan. It's yeah. hard to have that conversation. But I yeah. do think that we all need to be doing that. As soon as we can get that concrete information, we need to know yeah. that. Well, and the people I'm thinking of are Berlin people. Oh, good, yeah. great. Yeah, no, we'll talk offline. Okay, all right, let's move on. Evidence for assessing performance, bottom of page 14. Okay. Um, the second bullet and third bullet, um, and to me, this is part of the goals conversation we're about to have in, in October a little bit. Right. And, um, it, is the goal clear enough that we have, we can have a picture of what performance looks like at proficient and particularly at exemplary is is there a way for somebody to do better than mm -hmm. what they described sometimes goals are written in a way that they kind of top out mm -hmm. edit and then that's all you can do you've met right. it 
Right. But there should be a way, it should be framed in a way that somebody could actually exceed that. Yes. Um, so I think that's, again, part of what people need to think about, uh, maybe part of the framing that you put out. Maybe there's a little, there, there could even be a little, like, um, crib sheet almost that you, yeah. you prepare for people that say, you know, if you're listening to goals, does it, is it a smart, does it, is it smart, is it, uh, I break it apart, specific, measurable, blah, blah, blah. Uh, is there a way for someone to exceed the goal? Uh, is it clear to you what, what it would look like if, if what proficient would look like, what mm -hmm. exceed would look like? Right? So there might be a little crib sheet that has five little questions like that on it. Um, right. is, it is it challenging? Is it centered on the district, pri uh, district priorities? Right. Does it say what, um, is it clear what the impact will be for improvements in the district and on students learning? Impact, so one of the things about the goals is they're supposed to be, um, both, they're supposed to have benchmarks which show progress. Mm -hmm. You know, by December this will be done and by February this will be done and then, you know, by June this will be done but it's also supposed to specify outcomes. Like what's the impact of this work going to be for students? And if, if we're not clear on that, then it needs more work. And this is something that we've, we've talked about in, pa in the past um, that does not always get addressed in our goals that we need to get better at. Excellent. All right, I think that brings us up to compiling ratings. And this has to do with, and, and the next category, decision-making process and reporting ratings. So the compiling ratings, um, the second bullet says, how should the compiler deal with incomplete or inconsistent rating forms? We have a process that we did last year, right? We each, you contacted Boylson people, I contacted Berlin people if something was missing or... Right. Uh, not clear on a on a rating form. On our timeline, oh, which we didn't actually finish the timeline. <laughs> I wandered right off of that. Uh, let me go. We'll go back to that in a minute. Let's we'll finish what we're doing and come back to the timeline. I was spaced out there. Um, at the end of the timeline, we have like you know just a couple of days to get that check done. And I'm a little nervous about that because last year when something had to get resubmitted because uh, someone didn't fill it out right, it took like a week. Right. Uh, and so, this is a tight timeline this year. Right. And it was last year. It was but last year too, you're right. Yeah. Kept on going with the process and then added that in yeah. when we got it. But, um, you know, maybe maybe this year, well, who knows, right? If, it's, if the committee <clears throat> changes over a little bit and there's, one or more new people filling out these forms, this could be a real issue in May because maybe there'll be several people who have misunderstood something about the form. Yeah. Yep. So um, that, that sort of puts more weight on that whole induction process of making sure they really understand. Absolutely. Before we get there, it's, it's um, use me as you want in that process. Yeah, if you, when you get to it. Um, we have to always bear in mind here that we may have brand new people filling out some of this. Mm -hmm. um, That's and, good. You know, part of that induction is reminding people that it's okay that you don't know everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's expected if you've only been here a few months that you're just piecing things together. And I think uh, they people can defer and say, you know, here's some observations I have, but I don't feel I know enough to put a final rating on this. Yeah. Yeah. Or on this particular goal or on, you know, people can, but they have to understand that if they defer because they don't have enough knowledge that they need to live with the consensus of the group that is completing it. Um, 
Right. I see what you're saying. Danger zone. You know, if they're, it, it, if let's say a worst case scenario was that we had three people on the committee who are, have done this before and three new people the, and people felt like, well, shoot, I came on just two months ago and I just don't know enough to put the rating on here. And they deferred to the other group, then the evaluation would fall in the hands of three people. Right. That's a good so point. So we have to just, um, Think about that during induction. That is a really good question or a really good thing to consider. Yeah, it's tough. Because originally that was my plan was that I felt like I didn't know enough. But then when I got into the meat of what you had in the binder, I gave myself permission to defer. And then once I got into the meat of the binder and I started realizing my comments, I was like, no, I, I feel like I can I feel like I can rate on this. Yeah. Yeah, right. I think your your experience with that would be very helpful talking to someone new. You know, oh, this, this is how I felt initially, but then, you know, I just spent more time familiarizing myself with the standards and, you know, what they mean and so on. And then I felt differently and I was able right. to go ahead and rate. And even still, you, you've you said, uh, you know, my, my subsequent ratings were, I mean, after the rating and I read everybody else's rating, I realized I, oh, maybe I rated this too highly because I didn't quite yes. know enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but sure. it's still, it's okay. I think you sharing your process uh, would be very helpful for people. Um, so what we did last time is we did this all by subcommittee and we created this report that uh, had some summaries in it. And we wrote reflections about that at the end of the report in the appendix. Let me see if I can find that for a minute. I'm gonna close this. Save that. And let me see if I can just find this document for a second. Um, okay. Should have a certification in Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I think this is it. Okay. And let's see. Yep. The subcommittee reflection. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so um, I think most of this is intact because Jim put us back into evaluation. So he's already said, okay, I want a subcommittee doing this again mm -hmm. and building um, expertise in the process so we can have two other people. You lead the process next year with someone else. Mm -hmm. So some of this has already been addressed. You know, we, we raised questions about, you know, why we felt the subcommittee might be useful um, and he's basically said, let's do that in the committee and the committee seems on board. So the report structure though, um, I, I think, I think we're okay on the report structure the way it was. Mm -hmm. Um, the part that we haven't discussed and Jim may want to discuss with legal, I'm not sure was this summary writing. I um, see. Yep. Our aim was to help the committee synthesize the big picture comments supporting members final summative ratings. Most importantly, because members only have a short time to read and digest the report prior to discussing and voting on it. Mm -hmm. um, that's why the summary and the synthesis are really, I don't know how a school committee could read all of that feedback in a short time and have meaningful conversation and vote in an informed vote without those summaries. Um, it also ensured that the two of us were pretty familiar with those comments. So at least there were two people on the committee, if any questions came up about what was in the feedback, we could probably address it because we kind of steeped ourselves in it. 
Mm -hmm. um, our primary concern about including any summaries in the report is that summary writing introduces a layer of interpretation. Remember this conversation? I, I do, yeah. Any committee member may see different themes crossing the data and writing a summary privileges the writer's perspective over others. Um, further, because of the frequent changes in school committee membership, there's no guarantee that the writer will have the time, skill, or inclination to draft objective summaries that actually aid the school committee's deliberations. Therefore, embedding summaries at the start of the report might accidentally undermine, distract, or influence the committee's process. That's the downside. So I right. think, I, I do feel like um, the committee should decide what they want that report to look like. Mm -hmm. um, would you agree with that? I do agree with that, yep. Um, uh, in terms of summaries, uh, or if there's any organizational, you know, ease of reading kinds of issues, I feel like we should get that feedback. Um, but the summary part in particular, we should decide. Um, and it may be that Jim, that's not, uh, I'm not sure that's necessarily important to decide right now. It could be decided closer to the report writing. Um, but it might be good in terms of Jeff, because uh, uh, knowing what the final product is going to look like for his evaluation. Right. Um, so I'll, I, I, I can put this out to Jim and say that, you know, we want this decision to be made. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, I guess it's possible that the decision could be made between Jim and Jeff. This is true. Yeah. Could it? I mean, as a school committee member, would would it bother you if they made the decision? No. I mean, the only the only thing that that I think of is if it's helpful to school committee members to digest. Yeah, that's true. Then we should hear from. Them. Yeah. So I don't know if it's something that we should discuss at a meeting or. Um, I mean, I, I do feel comfortable with the two of them discussing it, but I just don't know overall. It'd be interesting to get the feedback from the other members. Did you read this? Did you find this helpful? Do you, yeah. you know, did you, did you find it, you know, that it was leading or did you find that it really summarized what you read? You know, how did you look at that? Yeah. But then again, I, 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 I really value your your question about legal. Like, are, are we are we allowed to do that? Well, um, I, I this is we need to. I need to check in with Jeff about this um, because when you read the guidance out there from MASC and DESE, um, they say it can be done this way. They say, I mean, the language in here uh, or in the description of the five step process is taken from their guidance and they say huh. that um, you aggregate and synthesize, uh, summarize. So um, that's different than saying you're just compiling, you just right. dump it in there. Um, so I think I, I will return to, to Jim about this because I think he had some questions about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also want to make sure that we consult um, MASC because I know that other school committees do this. Right. So, but we do need to just resolve that issue about the summaries one way or another. So, so first maybe it's a legal question and then get that resolved. And then if, if this is all fine, then we need to get the school committee's input. Um, so I will, I'll follow up with Jim because I've had previous conversations with him about that. That'd be helpful. So, okay. Will individual ratings or comments be presented publicly and discussed or will only a composite or a synthesis? We did both. Our report had, our, the, the report had all of it. 
summaries yeah. and the individuals. I think we should continue to do that and unless the committee says it's not helpful, but agreed. But it's important for Jeff to be able to see all that too. And then um, the discussion piece. There was no discussion last year. I'm surprised, actually. Jim moved right through. It, it was oh, poor baby. Yeah, he has a little piece. Of, I think he has a little piece of grass stuck in his throat. Uh, trying to get it out. Um, it, it, you know, we saw there was a high-level consensus on the final rating, and I think he moved. He just moved to that, but there really should have been discussion. Um, so I think part of that is just working with Jim to make sure that he feels, you know, ready to facilitate that discussion. It right. can be difficult if people, if, if last year we were on the same page, but if any given year we have people with really divergent perspectives on performance, then he's got a challenging job to facilitate that discussion. Um, but, but it is an ex expectation that this be a transparent process to the public. So that discussion needs to take place. So that's just uh, talking with Jim. Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna have to give him something that's gonna help push it down. <laughs> Uh, you want to go get him a treat or something? Yeah, I'll be right back. Do you mind? No, no, go ahead. It'll take one second. Thank you. Yep. Okay. All set. Yep. Thank you. Oh, that helps. Um, so I think that's everything in this organizing for success piece. Excellent. I think everything else there we really worked out last year. Yeah, I really, I'm, I'm so proud of the report that we made. I, I'm, I'm glad that you had the vision and, and um, just the organizational skills to, to pull that together because I feel like it was an accurate representation of how we all felt and it was really informative and it was, I, I thought it was very easy to read. I hope so. Um, it's still, you know, it's still a lot, right? right. So people have to, I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm I'll probably tweak it a little more this year, but, um, but I think we're on the right track with that. So let's go back to the timeline, which I flitted right off of when we got going on the, um, evaluate on the goal setting process. So um, this bottom of page one, the October, do you have the evaluation timeline? I do, hold on, it's, let me just reduce my screen. Is it the school committee responsibility? No. No. Nope. Evaluation timeline. Uh, where did you find that? Yeah, where did I? Oh, here it is. Uh, no, that's district improvement plans. I have so many tabs open. 2021. Uh, let me see where, it, if it's, did I put it in the, uh... yeah, it's in our folder, our meeting folder. Oh, right here. Yep. Okay. okay yep. Okay. We're at the bottom of page one in October. Okay. Uh, School committee superintendent, you know, they review the district improvement plan, and then the school committee votes on the superintendent's individual goals and focal indicators. So that should follow right on the heels. So we should hear about the district. Is he okay? 
Yeah, I just threw him another piece of banana. He's loving it. <laughs> oh, I would guess he would eat a banana. That's funny. I was surprised he did too. I brought a whole bunch of things, and that's the thing he went for. <laughs> He's a rabbit that loves bananas. Uh, okay, so um, he presents the district improvement plan, and then he presents his goals, and hopefully, his goals are going to, you know, highlight some district improvement priorities. Then the top of page two, the school committee forms and votes on school committee goals. So I believe you and Angela are coming back with a goal on induction, right? Yes. And then two other people on the other school committee goal. So that's mm -hmm. the other thing that happens then. Okay, November, December. This is, these are just updates now. So everything's, the foundation's all laid. Now the school committee hears updates from the superintendent uh, and evidence all through the rest of the 2020. And in the meantime, we are updating this guidance document, which I'll probably do because it's all on my computer anyway. Um, and ha some of it's done, like the timeline will be done and stuff. So I'll, I'll do that. I feel like the notebook is. Oh, that's really helpful. If you, if you need me to do anything, let me know with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, yeah, so let me think about that. I, I yeah. first I go through and identify what needs to be updated, mm -hmm. uh, and I'll go from there. Uh, so then January is the mid-year formative assessment, and it says at a public meeting. That's one of the three public meetings. He does a mid-year report out on where he's at with the goals and if there are any mid-course corrections that need to be made. Introduction to superintendent's evaluation is provided to any new committee members uh, yep um, i put it in january thinking mid-year but obviously that takes place anytime yeah and then um evaluation subcommittee or designee makes updates to the committee self-assessment tool and i guess we have to decide if we're going to do that self that you know survey self-assessment every year we could decide to recommend anyway uh, doing that like every other year mm -hmm. uh, which to me could work because well uh, i guess i guess the point of it would be it would surface some direction for the next year's goals so that's the benefit of doing it every year right Maybe we should just do it every year. But we had some feedback on the tools, uh, items, remember on there? We, some of them we felt didn't center enough on what the school committee was doing. Yes, I do remember that. I remember them being very difficult to answer because- wow. Yeah, we yeah. waited for somebody else instead of yeah. ourselves. And so the point there is in January, we should tackle uh, some revisions to those items. And that we could probably do together absolutely Very specific wording and also i'd want to get uh talk to masc and see if they if they want any of that they want to use any of that or are we now personalizing the survey tool so that it's really ours right um so that involves talk talking with masc so that's that's a, a january task for us to continue tackling as the evaluation subcommittee but we do that in January, okay? That's perfect, yeah. Okay, February to April, superintendent continue, continues to provide updates and evidence on progress, and the school committee provides updates and progress on their own goals. Mm -hmm. Now we're into May 2021. This is where the timeline gets tight. So it says the committee chair sends link to the online self-assessment Mm -hmm. the school committee self-assessment to the committee and they have to have it done by may 2nd but what i don't have here is when that link needs to be sent out so if it has to be done by may 2nd oh i see what you're saying yeah when does it yeah when would it need i would say a week ahead i agree so let's see may what would that be say the 23rd friday the 23rd or saturday the 24th of april i'll look at that on the day uh, yeah 
I, I would almost, I would almost go with Friday because you could I feel like you see it. And then the next day is when you really commit to doing it. True. Um, and it's a it's Saturday. 23rd. Okay. So I'll add that in. So what I think we, we need to come back, I'll put this into the school committee folder for mm -hmm. October saying just, this is the final timeline. We've, we've tightened up a couple of dates. There's nothing, I don't think anybody has to vote on anything here. Just for people's information. Right. Uh, Friday, April 23rd, they send out the link and May 2nd, it's all in. Then by May 7th, this committee, you and I, mm -hmm. prepare um, a summary. Yeah. Like we did last time. So we need to meet. So I'm just going to make a note here. Yeah. Well, subcommittee meets to form self-assessment report for school committee. May 18th school committee. So, um, oh boy. Uh oh, that didn't last long. To be fair, he was just cleaning himself up, so it might oh, be a hair oh. mess. <laughs> um, so, we have to ask MASC to send us the, the data. Mm -hmm. Unless, unless if, if we are doing our own self assessment at this point because we've modified so many items, then we don't ask anybody. We will have the results. From our own survey monkey account. I was, was going to say, yeah, that'd be great. If that's how yep. we, that's how it is. I mean, then there's no waiting time. Right. We just get it and go. Yeah. Uh, and then that's shared. It says presented at the May 18th school committee meeting. Mm -hmm. So that's done early May. Yep. And then we're reporting out those results on May 18th. And then the school, the superintendent's evaluation process kicks in. So on May 18th, the committee chair distributes the individual summative report forms to school committee members. Say, here's, here's the form. Here it's got all the superintendent's goals and focal indicators and everything in it. Here you go. You have one week to complete it. I think that's what we did last time. That's and the so. pressure seemed to help everybody just get focused on that task. I think the only difficulty is if, um, you know, someone's new or someone has any pressures going on in their lives. <laughs> right, right. I'm looking at the uh... family obligations, you know, it's a busy yeah. time of year. Um, so that's, that's the danger. But we ask for one week and for them to mark it on their calendars and save time. Yeah. Then um, June, so it's all it's all back to us by May twenty six. So then June, um, we follow up with anybody who is missing a report. We have like two days to track down what's going on there and to get get those evaluation reports all in and correct. Mm -hmm. Then we have 10 days to get the report written. Now, as I recall, last time, last year, didn't we have like three meetings? I think we did. Yeah. Um, which I think we should plan on. Particularly yeah. if there are, is any dis discrepancy in how people are seeing performance? You know, we got to be able to have time to work that out. So I'm going to add a little note here saying in between one and two saying subcommittee holds up to, you know, three meetings mm -hmm. um, to draft the report. Then number two, the report comes to the school committee. It's posted on the shared drive by Tuesday morning, June 8th, and it's discussed that evening on, uh, at the school committee meeting on June 8th. 
Okay. Yes, that's perfect. And then the rest of four is also on June 8th, executive session if it's needed. Right. And then number five, I think we, I, I'm going to suggest modifying this text a little bit. The committee chair will take out reference to the subcommittee. The committee chair solicits feedback on the strengths and areas for improvement in the evaluation process this year. Period. And that's, take out the last line. Yeah. You don't need that at this point. Uh, and then September is just a note saying, okay, you know, this cycles back around. The committee revisits the self assessment and results to inform goal setting. The superintendent revisits the summative feedback to inform his goal setting. The committee restarts the cycle of continuous improvement and the committee reviews and approves the next evaluation timeline. And I'm gonna add, and any recommended revisions to the evaluation process. Right. So, so those are the changes. We're really not, we're not changing any dates, I don't think. We're just adding in some in-between dates for a subcommittee meeting so that we make sure that we're ready. But I don't think we're changing any dates, are we? Um, I don't think so. I'm just, I just lost my whole screen. I don't know what just happened. Can you see me? Yes. My whole screen is black. I don't know why. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Hold on. I think it's because my computer was running out of battery. Let me just read plug. Technical difficulties. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we've changed any dates. So there's no reason for revision. We've just added in a couple more to help us um, make sure we're on track, particularly at the end there. So that seems in pretty good form. So I will suggest to Christy that there be a, before Jeff presents his goals, in between presenting the district improvement plan. No. So if Jeff is presenting the district improvement plan and his goals, and we want to say a few things about goals, do we want to say it in front of the district improvement plan? Or do we want it like today, we're going to be discussing goals. And part of that is understanding the district improvement plan and then making sure the goals are really advancing that plan. We could talk yeah. in that high level place. Yep. Um, it seems that would, it might be good for him to go not to go uninterrupted between the district improvement plan and the goals. But, um, the other place we could go is right in between. And before we, before he presents his goals, we can kind of get people tuned to thinking about goals. Where would you like to be? I'm sorry. Wait. In front of, I mean, talking, framing the goals process in front of the district improvement plan presentation or after the district improvement plan and before he presents his goals. <laughs> so he's, he's going to present the district improvement plan and his goals. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the question oh, is, do I want to talk in front of that or after? Is that what you're saying? Do we want to talk in front of the district improvement plan or in between the district improvement plan and his goals? I don't know. Do you feel like in between would be the right place? Or do you feel like people would be paying more attention, not, not paying more attention, but would have more of a focus on the goals if they knew ahead of time? I guess I'm not really sure. I don't know. Yeah. What would your recommendation be? I mean, I think either one would be fine. Um, I think uh, it may frame a little bit about how you, how you talk. Right. Um, but I think either one is doable. What's your, in, what's your leaning? Um, I don't know only because I've never been a part of that before. So I don't know. I'm not really sure what, what I would, how to, what I would expect. Well, if, if you talked before the district improvement plan, I think you'd, you'd make a point of saying something about, um, you know, we're, we're going to be um, discussing the and Jeff's annual goals and those goals are designed in large part to advance the district improvement plan. 
district improvement. So, um, you know, we're going to listen to Jeff's presentation of the district improvement plan and any changes or updates to that. And then we're going to think about how the goals are written to advance that. Okay, I see what you're saying. Um, that that's what you'd probably want to, you know, frame if you yeah. went for the district improvement plan. If you went after the district improvement plan, you'd say probably something like, now that we've heard the updates on the district improvement improvement plan, we're ready to think about the annual goals. I feel like personally for me, but it's just the kind of learner that I am, that knowing ahead of time, that it's not just listening to them going, oh, that sounds like a good goal, but actually having a purpose in my head as to we're going to need to relate this to that. Yeah. Um, I feel like going ahead of time would be the, the right thing. All right. So um, I will right. I mean, unless you, I, I, I guess I, Unless you think that going after would be, that for me, as a new member, but no one else is new, it would be helpful to remember that, but I'm not sure that some of the other members remember that that's how, that they're related. Yeah, well, well it, yeah, it, it might be helpful for everybody to kind of be on the same page about that. I'm just checking to see, I did, I did, I may have just asked Jim and Jeff for the opposite. So let me see, I sent an email earlier, I'm just going to go Go back to that for a minute. Um, and I have a black screen. I have no idea what happened to my computer. Oh, frustrating. Well, we're almost done. Oh, um, yeah. No, no worries on that. I just, I don't want you to think that I'm not paying attention. I'm... Let me see. I asked, I, I, I asked to confirm that Jeff is going to be presenting the district improvement plan. Okay, so I didn't place ourselves on here. So I guess I would write to Jim and ask if we could say, you know, a few words about the goal setting process mm -hmm. um, before Jeff does his district improvement plan presentation. Okay. Okay. All right. I can uh, send that little note. And I think everything else is in good form. So, um, so things that need to be done. Yep. Um, I'm going to go into the, no, I guess I, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go into the evaluation report template and add mm -hmm. comment boxes at, after each of three goal boxes. Yeah. Uh, so people can see what that would look like and mm -hmm. upload, ask Christy to upload that. Um, well, then I'm going to do the crib sheet with the smart goals. Are they measurable? Yeah. So um, what I'm going to say that night. Yeah. So if you have a little crib sheet you want people to access, then um, you should send that um, to me and I'll, yes. I'll send it with the other materials that we're going to send for goal setting. Yes, and any editing or suggestions um, would be really helpful. I appreciate your expertise in guiding me through that or advising. And <laughs> Plus, Lori's crib sheet. So um, let's just, so you think you'll be do, doing that in the next couple days? Yes. Yep. So crib sheet um, and email Jeff, uh, Jim about where on the agenda talk about goal setting. You'll want to keep it brief. Yep. So, you know, it's good. We'll have our bullet points, right? Figured right. out. Right. Okay. 
Then um, we have this question about whether the summaries, you know, whether to do the summaries and the final report. And I'm going to ask Jeff to decide when to when to get that feedback. Okay, that's helpful. I'll talk to Jim about that legal issue related to that. Mm -hmm. And then there's something else that I had here. Let's see. Maybe that's it. I felt like there was more. Maybe not. No, I think if we, so we put in the guidance, the documents, and in your, in your comments or in your, maybe on your crib sheet, I'm just wondering if, you know, how you reference these documents um, so that they're useful. Oh, I see what you're uh, saying. And so, you know, maybe there's a way to put a, make a little, table or something underneath the crib sheet so people mm -hmm. understand what these are and you can list them. So the, the school committee and superintendent responsibilities, for example, has a number of things in it. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the responsibilities that also had the link to the DIP and it had the, it will have the link to the superintendent's job description. Yes. So, you know, you could bullet that out in a little table saying, yep you know, this is where these things are. And, uh, you know, a reason, maybe, maybe there's a column that says, you know, why you might consult these, mm -hmm. what you want to see here. Um, I'm not sure. You'd have to think about yeah. that. Then the SMART goals document, uh, which has both the definition of SMART and has examples. Um, and what I, you know what I'm thinking is um, you know how for the policy subcommittee I write this little blurb just saying okay here's here are the policies that are up for review this month and you know why what's happened to them and why we're talking about them yeah Maybe you could do something and uh, you could have the crib sheet but that could be the bottom of the page maybe the top of the page would be you know here's here here are whatever three documents we're providing for you to get ready for the goal setting process mm -hmm. one you know school committee and superintendent responsibilities and evaluation and then a bullet underneath that says note yeah number three uh in the school committee roles and number four or whatever you know maybe there's a way to sort of talk them through why these documents are there yeah in in a in you know half a page brief mm -hmm. you know easy to skim right right and then um here are some uh, prompts to help you think about uh and discuss the the uh, school committee goals that jeff is presenting tonight mm -hmm. and then they can um and then you can have your whatever you know, three yeah. five bullet points under that or check marks or something mm -hmm. um little boxes that you can check <laughs> okay. um that that help focus them on the specifics of the goals so the top part would be orienting them to the re resources we're providing and the bottom part would be okay now let's talk about the goals and here are the things to keep in mind does that make sense? Would yes, that, work? that makes a lot of sense. So um, I think the only, the only other document that's going to go in there is this up, updated timeline. And you can say that at the top, you know, we've provided um, the final superintendent evaluation timeline. None of the dates have changed since September, but we've added a couple of 
subcommittee dates and um, you know small details to make sure we stay on track, something like that. It does not need to be voted again. Okay, that's good to know. Okay, that's great. That's very helpful. Would that work? Yeah. Yep. So then, um, what was the document you were going to, uh, oh, the checklist. Okay. Yeah. So once you have that document, if you want to send it to me, I'll give you any feedback on that. And then, yeah. and then, um, or if there's something dinky to fix, I can do that. And then I can just send all these materials to Christy at once. That'd be great. Oh, good. Okay. I think we're, we're in good shape. 